Welcome to Better Daily Life, where we are moving forward one percent better every single day. Download the app and supercharge your journey at BetterDaily.life. Now it's time to get facts and get facts with your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What's up, Betterment family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. We are live here in Wild Wednesday, and today I've got a special treat for you because we are joined by Jared, and I only know you as Jared67 or 76, your username in Better Daily. (laughs) 76. I'm sure that's significant for a reason. You're a man who doesn't do things on accident. How are you this morning, brother? I'm doing great. Doing good. Mm. Thank you for joining me for for Wild Wednesday. I wanted to highlight your recent experience in the Grow Ruck. And Correct. honestly, man, it just sounded brutal. So first of all, what did you do and why? Like, what, what was this event? How did you sign up for it? What is this thing? So as you guys know, I'm, or, or those of you who've been around uh, the Betterment Daily, uh, you know, the community for a while, I've been part of F3 for a little over a year. F3 is a national men's peer led, basic, basically a peer led organization. Mm -hmm. It's a not for profit. It is uh, designed to promote, start and grow local men's free workouts Mm -hmm. with the added mission of invigorating male community leadership, you know, taking men into their communities to is so it's not just about the workout it's about the you know developing leaders for the communities for their families for their churches whatever well i remember um, when you first started posting these workouts you're like hey i'm i'm gonna lead my first workout and you were like i've never done this before but here we go <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty much yeah i mean and, and basically as quickly as you get into f3 you know you're you're already being pushed to hey when are you going to lead your first workout? Uh, do you want to maybe at some point take on leadership of a site, uh, meaning like mm-hmm. a, a, a local workout, which I'm about to do in a month or so. I'm going to take on, I'm going to be the the site queue, which is the site coordinator basically for the one that's like about three minutes from my house. So how cool. Um, so I'll be doing that in the near future. That's awesome. So as part of F3, Um, One of the things that they do is this grow ruck and they do this every so often. It's uh, essentially if you if you're familiar with go ruck or the go ruck organization, Mm -hmm. uh, they do different events. They do go ruck light, go ruck heavy, go ruck uh, selection, which is like a special forces selection type thing. It's like 48 hours long. And like they've done. I looked into that. There's like a. 520 some people have gone through it and 37 have made it to the end <laughs> yeah yeah no well i mean isn't that the special forces like isn't that how they yeah. train i want to say i watched a documentary where you know 300 dudes show up and they're they're elite military already and yeah. by the end of the the training there's 20 something left and like, exactly you're in, you're in. <laughs> yeah they try to get into your head and you know it's the kind of that kind of thing where they um, and, and so this is this this grow ruck. It started basically. They were actually contracting out to the go ruck guys mm. to come and do the cadre for these events. And it's essentially the same as a go ruck tough, which is about a twelve to fifteen hour event. Mm. Um, it's overnight. Um, it's high stress. In other words, they have a cat. There's, there's nobody there patting you on the back. I mean, there there's a cadre there to yell at you and kind of really push you and it's it's military style training mm-hmm. and um, i mean they're they're there to kind of get you all discombobulated on purpose like the idea is what you do in times of high stress and limited visibility is what you need to be ready you you prepare for that so that when those times come in a not controlled because this is in a controlled environment mm-hmm Right. You're, it's high stress and limited visibility, but there's it's it's controlled. So like if something goes wrong, somebody can go, hey, we got to stop. Sure. That's hurt. And the motivation or the idea behind it is that you would be able to handle times of high stress and limited visibility when it's you not control when it's not controlled. Uh-huh. Right. And so it's it's very much 
that. So I signed up for this. And, um, and it's not like, and, and sorry to cut you off there, but you know, in the military, that makes sense to people. People understand like, oh, okay, you have to get ready for war where anything right. can happen. But some people don't quite get the, as a civilian, why does that matter? Why do you need to be able to hack it? Or what do you need to know about what you're made of when when everything hits the fan in an uncontrolled, high stress environment, as, as you said? And I, I generally argue business, fatherhood, husbandhood, life, like, like, that can be a high stress, uncontrolled environment where nobody's sure. patting you on the back. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and the other thing is you just never know what you're going to encounter uh, in life. I mean, it's not about, it's not some kind of like doomsday prepper kind of thing. It's more right. like, you just don't know. I mean, you could be, you could be anywhere and there could be an emergency situation. There could be a high stress situation. And, you know, as a, guy i want to be able to be an asset and not a liability in those situations uh-huh and if i've got to carry somebody out of a place that's on fire or mm -hmm. you know whatever whatever it is you know i mean you know you know heaven forbid we, we live in a time when there's mass shootings and things like that and so mm -hmm. you know i want to be the guy that's able to pull people out of that and i don't want to be the guy who's just you know not able to who freezes and isn't able to do anything in those times exactly yeah very well so, said. so this event was coming up. It's part of the F3 uh, process and community. And so you were like, I'm going to do that. That sounds like a blast. Like when, when did you make this decision? <laughs> so they posted it. I mean, it, it's something that everyone is encouraged to do. No one's obviously required to do it. It's, it's all voluntary. You do pay for it. It is a, there's a cost involved, mm -hmm. not a huge cost, but it's not a, it's not a minimal either. I mean, you're going to pay somebody to come yell at you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, a, and there's actually quite a bit of, I, you know, I found out there's quite a bit that goes on in, in terms of um, support. They have, you know, a support staff and they have lots of people there. They have people coming in from out of town. I mean, like there's all kinds of things that that money goes to. So it's not like it's not a profit center for anybody. Sure. Um, and it, you know, it was a couple hundred, it was less than $200. I think it was $175 to do the thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is something that all the men in F3 are encouraged to do at some point. Yes. You know, you, you know, we'd like for everybody to try to do this um, because the the bigger part of that is that this one of the factors behind it is they want to use this as a springboard to create growth in the organization itself. Mm -hmm. So you take back home these leadership lessons to your local workout and then you try to draw more men in, try to do more things to to to, you know, apply these principles in your own community. Mm. So, so on, and it's an, an initiating experience, something like if, if you're in the, the world of men's discipleship or fellowship for any length of time, you know that one of the things we lack in today's world is an initiation for men. And any ladies listening to this, I know you guys have your own process of initiation into womanhood and, and whatnot. But for men, it's like something has to whittle you down till you have nothing left and then you have right. to learn a very important lesson that you get to carry with you for you know i hope the rest of your manhood and yeah. and manhood is punctuated by events like that and it sounds like something like this is just a, a very powerful way to reestablish that connection with initiation and to set yourself right and, and move forward from it definitely definitely and there's there's like leadership principles. Like um, we have a thing. It says the GR three is what they call it, but it, it's a get right, live right, lead right, leave right. So the idea is that you get yourself together mm -hmm. and then you live that way and improve upon that. Then you become a leader yourself. Absolutely. And then you also set up a legacy of leaders behind you. You know, that somebody's going to come along behind you and it's your duty to prepare the place for that person and to leave in a good way. And um, you can tell organizations that are led by good leaders who, when they're, when the, when they're gone, that organization still continues following that leader still functions yeah. rather than, you know, there's a thing. It says a, you'll follow a good leader when he's out of the room. You'll follow a great leader when he's no longer there, when he's no longer present at all. Yeah. You know, so that's the idea is, is move from a good to a great leader. Mm -hmm. So you committed to this thing and I mean, how do you train for a 15 hour rec event? Uh, well, 
on the back side of it now, <laughs> I know some I know some areas that I've I maybe should have trained more. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but going into it, I mean, I the idea was it, it, I was talked to other guys. I said just get a, a lot of time in under your ruck at full weight. How much you is know. your your ruck weight? Everybody is required to carry a thirty pound weight mm. plus six liters of water. Okay. Um, which is heavy in itself. I mean, six yeah. liters is like two three liter bottles of water. If you think about it. I was gonna and say then whatever other gear you need water or something. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever other gear you need, like food, and, you know, extra socks or whatever. So, sure. I mean, that, that didn't turn out to be a whole lot of weight, but I mean, and then, you know, your bag itself probably weighs a couple pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, those goes go ruck bags are pretty heavy. So um, between 40 and 50 pounds or so. Yeah. Somewhere around 45 bag, yeah. to 50 pounds is probably your full weight. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, you, you kind of start, I started at 30, uh, for a week or two and then built up and then added on. And I've been rucking off and on for several years. Mm -hmm. Um, just as a, just throwing weight in a backpack and going for a walk. I can you see know, it in your that's, traps. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they definitely, they definitely it'll, have grown. It'll, it'll uh, build it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, uh, you know, I, I trained, I, you know, put a lot of miles in. And then one of the things that I did some of, but probably not enough of was part of the experience is you don't you don't you're not carrying a watch or a phone so you, once that thing starts you don't know how long you've been doing it you don't know when it's going to end that'll mess with and, your head especially if you're used to oh, checking man. yeah absolutely so um so anyway there's a section of this thing that's you carry really heavy stuff mm. and it's several hours i mean like there's we we had logs we had extra sandbags that you carry in addition to your rock. So, yeah. you know, there's got, you know, four or five guys under a 200 or 400 pound log and I'm a short guy. So I, I, the first time I got under the log, I'm like, there's this much space between me and the log. Cause I'm with all tall guys. I'm like, guys, I'm not doing anything. It's like, I'm just bouncing. <laughs> I'm trying to help. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to help, but I've not, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. So they, they're like, yeah, we got to get somebody taller. So, um, you know, you rotate around. And you carry these sandbags and stuff. But so, I mean, as far as training, you know, carrying heavy things, like in addition to your ruck. Like, in addition, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is um, being adaptable and being, you know, uh, you're, you're not going to get through this thing alone. And so, you know, taking a team, several guys, and you're training with several guys, and you go out, and there's three or four of you, and then you take a 60-pound sandbag with you, and you keep switching off while you're mm -hmm. going so that you kind of get the idea that, you know, there's going to be some times where I have to carry a, it's, it's sort of the, the biblical principle of, you know, every man uh, must carry his own. Uh, I'm trying to remember the verse right off the top of yeah. my head. I normally would. And James, each, each man will carry his own burden so that he can carry the burdens of his community. Right. So, I mean, you, you know, the idea being that you have your own pack that you carry, mm -hmm. that's your responsibility. Um, everybody's carrying their own weight but you're also carrying the heavier burden of the community around you. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of a, a principle uh, of this. So, I mean, I, you know, training like that, and then just your regular upper body, lower body training that you do um, from week to week, you know, what, what kind of sore were you after? Like where, where were you sore? I'm sure you uh, had to tell upper you body for sure. Traps, lats, um, I actually, during the event, I had my triceps just complete at one point about probably around four o'clock in the morning, we were doing a nine 11 honoring workout, which was, uh, 343 step ups to represent the 343, uh, first responders that, that died. And then we went into nine rounds of four exercises, which was all with the ruck that were, uh, and we did 11 reps each. So nine 11, you did nine rounds of these four exercises. So it's 99 reps. Hmm. over the course of that and then we went back and did 343 more step ups <laughs> so it was it was bookended by that uh during that period of time my triceps just completely cramped up they just locked stopped up. working <laughs> and i just was like i don't even know how i'm gonna do anything else so i i sat down drank some water some electrolytes and um waved your arms around a lot <laughs> yeah and amazingly after a little while they kind of came back and i was able mm -hmm. to continue but it was i mean they, it felt like you know, a knife in your arm at some point during yeah, that. Yeah, when, when, when the muscle I mean, runs out of glycogen and it has no immediate energy, it's like, 
Good. Well, <laughs> I can't do anything with it. We're done here. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> my biceps were doing the same thing. My, and then toward the end, my even my quads and my hamstrings started doing the same thing. I was going to say, I've had that in my legs before. I've never felt that in my arms. I've never had well, my arms do that. You no, know, I mean, you get this pack and you take it off sometimes. You're doing presses with it. Yeah. And, um, you know, your arm, I mean, it's just stuff all night long, all night long. Uh, you're getting in the water. We got in the river, got out of the river and like, you you know, doing army crawls, you're facing the dirt, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and it, it it's, it's pretty miserable at times, but I mean, as far as soreness, I mean, I was sore kind of everywhere at first. Like, I mean, I got done on Sunday morning and I'm like, boy, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> I was like, I'm glad I got through it, but sure. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever do this again. And then a few hours went by and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I think I could, but I would do it next time to be stronger for the man next to me and the man behind me and in front of me well, and um, to be more of an asset. And this time I was surviving. I'd like to thrive, you know, yeah, I, I love really that. be the, the workhorse and, and stuff. So, you, you know, it's a good commitment when about halfway through it, you're like, whose idiot idea was this? Oh, mm -hmm. mine. <laughs> oh, mine. <Yeah. laughs> and, you know, I've heard people say this, like in doing endurance events, you know, like a David Goggins type uh, people talk about, you kind of go into your head kind of goes into a really dark space. And I found that to be true. Mm. I found that to be really um, powerfully true in a way, because, you know, there was a time where I was just like, I, I don't know. Uh, why I'm here. I don't know what made me think I could do this among these guys who are so much stronger and better than me. And you, your brain starts going, why don't you just quit? And, and so you have to wrestle with that question. And everyone from the toughest to the weakest man among you, every man in that group is asking the same question. Right. Yeah. And going, why are we, what in the world? I could, I could quit right now. Right. But then you go, I've made it this far. Um, if I quit, it'll be discouraging to the guy behind me. It might make him quit. You know, then you, but then you start questioning, well, I mean, am I slowing everybody down? Am I part of the, and so you, you really do have to kind of go through this place where in your mind, you go, well, uh, I'm not going to die. And even if I do, I'll pass out first. So I, won't <laughs> I love it. I love it. And if I die, it'll be over. So that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's fine. So you, and so your questions are going to get answered, of, of whether you can make it or not. You're the, you're going the, to ask. The, 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 the psalmist calls that the valley of the shadow of death. Like that's yes. the that's the headspace, and that's actually like a, a biblical thing in the gospel too. That's what Jesus goes through before he starts right. his ministry. He doesn't do it in a wreck event. It's 40 days of fasting, but it's basically it's he's boiled down to like, there's nothing left. He's in a very dark place. So dark that even Satan shows up to give him a hard time about it and really test his metal, you know? And, and like, that's kind of required because on the other end of that, you can say, I kept moving. Yep. <laughs> I kept yep. one foot in front of the other. I kept, I kept on the mission. And one of the things that I have heard repeated through my lead up to this is um, on the other side of pain and suffering is greatness. Mm. And to push through that and to get to the other side of that, you go, wow, I, I was able to do this. And it's not a pat on my own back. Mm -hmm. It's just a pat on. It's just a, um, a thing saying, you know what? I, I, I did this. I pushed through. I was able to get through something. And um, I want to be better to help other men do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, that's sort of the motivation that and you get through it. And you, and you, you you're not, because I didn't, I didn't get through it and, and feel like I was at the, you know, pinnacle of a mountain and that I had just, you know, no, I just you were broken, something. man. <laughs> I was like, no, I, I, you know, I did feel like I accomplished something, but it was like, well, I did it. But I mean, I, I see areas, I see, I see weak spots. I see blind spots that I go, I could have done better here. I could have done better here. And so it's mm -hmm. areas of improvement. It'll make you aware of the, of the blind spots. Uh, I'd like to address the audience as well. This, this, what Jared and I are talking about here, this is one of the reasons I do recommend doing an event now and then in your, your betterment journey, because an event can push you in a way that your normal training or your normal routine or your normal exercise 
it, it can't and and we have to go through that now and then uh, some people have yes. to go through it more than others i'm i'm pretty stubborn and hard-headed so i i like to make things hard on myself as often as possible but because i it takes me a while to learn the lesson but either way if if you haven't done an event i highly encourage you uh, to find something that you're interested in uh, whether it's whether it's a rucking event like what jared's talking about here um it, the grow ruck is what we're talking about or it could be you know for some people i've worked with a 5k is kind of like that step for them you know they've never sure. traveled three miles on purpose with a group of people who might witness them die on the street and that's very scary so uh, i i encourage you if you haven't done an event in a while or you've never done one start looking around and, and maybe even post it in the community tell us you're looking and those of us who have completed something will show you what we've done in the past and give you some pointers so jared can you share with us an instant in your your event if if your memory serves <laughs> that you won't forget like like oh man i remember that it whether it's mundane or, or earth shattering what's something that you won't forget that you're going to carry with you so throughout the night um it's in you're split into two platoons the group was, I mean, sometimes if there's more guys, they have more platoons, but in, in our case, it was two platoons of 30, roughly 30 men. We started with 30 men each. There were two guys that did have to drop uh, because one, both of them were injuries. Like one guy, he fell, there was a hole in the field and he twisted his knee pretty bad right off the, I mean, that was in the first couple of hours. And he's like, oh man, and this is a tough guy, but he's like, I'm going to have to go to the urgent care. Like mm -hmm. there's something wrong. Yeah, and, and it's something up bad enough that yeah. I'm not going to be able to walk. Yeah, on yeah. This. yeah. So, and he's actually, and there was another guy, I think there was another guy that broke his foot or something. So, dang. Um, uh, it just, you know, because you're, you're moving, you know, it's easy to do. Um, but I, I, you know, I try to be careful. Uh, but through that, there was, you know, throughout the night, there was different platoon leaders, different guys in charge. And um, not everybody gets a turn, but uh, several, people do you have a, a platoon leader and assistant platoon leader i didn't get that this time and it was that was okay no big deal mm -hmm. um one of the things they did is they took the youngest guy that was with us and the oldest guy that was with us they made the youngest guy a platoon leader and made the oldest guy an assistant platoon leader interesting this young guy was 15 years old holy cow and wow. he led us group you know this group of men from age 50 something to and I'm 46, uh, and he was the youngest guy. So, I mean, you had, you had some 20s, 20s, 30s guys, plenty of 40s guys, and a couple of guys over 50. And then the guy, I think that his assistant was maybe 54, 56 years old. But, you know, and, and you know, he was a young man, and so he didn't do everything right. None of us would because, uh, again, it's high stress. They throw all kinds of stuff at you, you know, like they'll – Say, okay, you're a casualty. So now not only do you have to carry all this stuff, but you got to carry this guy too. So you got to, that takes two guys or whatever to carry this guy for a while. Hmm. So this, this young man stepped up and led for probably, it was a good solid hour, hour and a half. He was in charge. Wow. Um, he did a good job. Uh, and his dad was also with the group. Hmm. And in the last, probably, I don't know, two or three hours of the event, his dad's feet were just cut up bad on the bottom. So I don't really know what was going on with his feet, but you know, he said they're, they're just destroyed. And so somebody else had his ruck. His dad had his arm wrapped around me and I had his dad just kind of ho he's hobbling along and I've got yeah. him plus my ruck. And he just keeps talking about how proud he is of his son, his son's leading and he's just there. And so the whole time he's just, he's like, I just, can't, I'm overjoyed by how mm. good he's doing. He said, I just, I can't, get over how much and at the very end when we did the patching ceremony at the end they let him give his son the patch and it oh, was cool. the most memorable moment mm -hmm. of the whole thing i mean it yeah. was very emotional all of us there had tears in our eyes we're just like yeah. wow this is something special yeah i got tears and, as you're talking about it and um that meant something to me i mean i have a 15 year old um mm -hmm. myself who is not ready for this kind of event. He does. I was going to gonna say, field. poor kid. <laughs> he doesn't know what's in for him. <laughs> He's not ready for this yet. He's, uh, he goes to F3 with me some, you know, and we've done some rucking ourselves, the two of us, and he and I go backpacking and hiking. Um, uh, he, he's got some asthma issues and things. And so, sure. I mean, I think that he, he would have a very, very hard time with this event through the night, but, um, 
you know, I, I think at, at some point maybe I'll try to encourage him to to do that with me mm-hmm. because that was just so the bond that it created between this father and son mm-hmm. was intense. And the bond that it created between all of us men, and there's a whole like we have a Slack. You know what Slack is? It's an yeah. app where you kind of communicate uh-huh. back and forth. Yeah. So we have a that's how F3 does a lot of communication. So there's a whole channel in there. There's a couple of channels really about this grow rec event and all this everybody's now going back through there over the last couple of days and just sharing their insights. And that's okay. been brought up time and time again and how how much that meant to everybody. Mm-hmm. And um it's beautiful, just really beautiful. So I'll never I'll never forget that. So nothing like a father's love and yeah. uh for the son to rise to the occasion that's for sure yeah, absolutely. Um, and even even if we haven't necessarily had that in our lives just to see it is enough <laughs> right which is super cool um well I, I i wanted to ask you know kind of on the the tail end of this conversation um how has this made you better and i know you've only had a couple of days to process this it sounds like something that's going to continue to inspire you and be a be an important part of of moving you forward uh but what can you share with us about how this has made you better i think uh one of the one of the key well there's plenty of takeaways but one of the key takeaways for me right now so far has been do something hard but do something that's hard enough that you're not sure you can do it. Mm. You look at it and go, I don't know if I have that in me. And if I will keep doing that, I'm going to find out where my limits are. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what one of the things that uh, the, uh, one of the leaders said at the end, he says, you know, he said, I got some bad news for you guys. And at the the very end, he goes, you are now a pickle. And we're like, everybody goes, what? (laughs) You've been pickled. He said, you can never be a cucumber again. Uh huh. Right. Because you know now what you're capable of. He said, I'm going to tell you, this isn't the end. Go do something harder. Do this again, but try to thrive next time. Do a harder event. Do something more. Do something. Maybe it's not even as physically challenging. Do something that, you know, you're not sure you can do mentally or, or, you know, you know, start some business or start some movement do something that you're not sure you can accomplish mm-hmm. and you know keep seeing where your limits are and also don't try to do it all on your own either mm. understand the importance of support around you and un- understand the importance of community i mean that that's what we do here is the this community that we have is really important this uh, important and the support that we give each other and the little encouragement Mm -hmm. the little comments that people make and the likes and all the stuff on our in this betterment community that we're part of is we're not in it alone i mean so nobody nobody has to feel like they're ever alone Mm -hmm. so those are my probably my two key takeaways I, th- I think those are awesome. And and I think that's really good advice for just pursuing better in general is I can't speak from a woman's perspective, but I think it's universal that we human beings are always capable of more than we know. And yes. so in order to be better, like it's kind of in the definition of what, what it means to be better. It's like, I, I really don't know. I don't know what the upward trajectory of this thing looks like, but I do know that if every single day I'm in pursuit of something that I'm not really sure I can handle <laughs> just, yeah. just a little, you know, that I will either get better or find out that wasn't the right path. <laughs> right. right. Well, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it, one of the things that they do, they throw this at you at the very tail end of the event. We had a, what they call a sunriser, which is basically like a kind of a devotional. It's not necessarily a faith. I mean, there is some faith based concepts and ideas and it's but it's not it's it's not specifically a faith-based event Mm -hmm. um but that's that's mentioned from time to time but so at the sunriser thing event you're basically the sun has come up and you know that there's some time left you're just not sure how long you're not sure how much of this is left and you and you you know you get kind of the end of this sunriser event they said do you have a little bit left in you and you go and you think okay well i know about how far it is back to the park are we just going to march back to the park or what, right. what else are we going to do? And we got back to the park and there was another two hours of pushing activity, really <laughs> punishing. Like, you know, basically they were like, uh, the, we were down to like two sandbags. 
they're like, okay, you're a casualty, you're a casualty, you're a casualty, you're a casualty. So now we got five, six casualties and 10 guys trying to carry all that. And then you, plus you're trying to carry that guy's ruck. And so this goes on and you're like, how long is this going to continue? <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I wish I had to knew what time it was because it's like, okay, I know that the event is somewhere between 12. It's usually not 12 hours. It's usually 14, 15 hours. Mm. And I know that we're back to the start. I know that I can see over there, the finish line. I can see where they've got stuff set up for us to get coffee and all. And you're like, surely this can't go on, but it just keeps going on. And you're like, mm. how, and, you know? And, and so you think that you're done. You know, you think that, man, I've got nothing left. I've made it back to the beginning. We're done. Yeah. 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 And you, you think that you've got nothing left. And it's that David Goggins thing where he says, you know, when you when you are just sure that you're tapped out and you're done and that's the it, you got nothing left. He says, you're only at about 40 percent. You got 60 yeah. percent left in you. And the fact of the matter is, is that if that had gone on another two, three hours, I mean, everybody there would have continued as long as those guys pushed us. As, as long as your body point, would allow you. Yeah. Yeah, at that point you're like, I'm, 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 I'm stuck with it this far. I'm not gonna quit now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know how long it could have gone on, but I mean, you're you're starting to think, man, how long, how long? But you just kind of keep pushing, keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and your so your physical you body will tell you a lot of things about how much you have left that your will can definitely override if you have sufficient reason to do so. Well, and that's what it, it, uh, I think. Um, one of the points I've heard is that. Your brain says you're done and your brains, your, your body starts trying to tell your brain, hey, you're done. No more. No more. And that's sort of, sort of self-protective mechanism. But he, but the but the idea is that if you can if you can will yourself through that, there's a whole lot more on the other side. Mm-hmm. And yes, you need to listen to your body. Yeah. Uh, but there comes a point where you can kind of go, all right, my body is trying to tell me I'm done, but I know that I can do more. I know I can keep going. And so I need to push through that. That's, that's what that phrase, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's what that means is, is right. In a way your flesh isn't that weak. It didn't, you didn't fall down in a seizure in the middle. Like, you know, it was saying, Hey, stop dummy. This is really hard. Um, but it's, it's weak in the sense that it doesn't want to go there. Right. You know, it's a it's survival and protection. You know, if you're there all the time, you'd probably die from the stress, you know, if that's how you right. lived your life. So there's a reason for that. But to know that the spirit or the the conscious ability to move past that place in your life and then to carry that with you every day going, uh, I wanted to do that, but I don't need to. I felt this way, but I didn't need to act on that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't feel like I had anything left, but you know what? I I spoke kindly instead of blowing up, you know, <laughs> like, like I tapped, I tapped yeah. that little extra because there is more in there and I found it once, you know, and, and you carry yeah. that with you. So uh, one little funny to me, funny thing that I noticed I was in the grocery store yesterday and I had one of those little baskets, you know, and then you start putting stuff in there that these things starts getting heavy and you kind of let it hang on quick, by your yeah. side. <laughs> So I'm like, you know what? I can hold this like that, you know, in my crooked arm. I'm going to hold it like this and I'm just going to see how long I'm going to see if I can just carry it like with my arm <laughs> for the whole time. And I did. I was like, that's not a big deal. Like it didn't feel like anything. Uh-huh. Um, so it was just sort of a, a little mental game that I was playing in the store going, this is just a little silly thing. But it's like, I remember in times past where I do something like that, and then and then and then I get done, and my my elbow hurts, my bicep hurts because I've done it too long or whatever. I'm like, that's just I, I need to push past that a little bit. So uh-huh. and little things, just little things like that, just continue to find little ways to push yourself a little bit further than you've gone before. Let that one percent, you know, that you yes. talk about, do a little more than you think you can do. Well, and and you might. <laughs> one percent's like an everyday thing i think in this this event you got like a, a good 15 percent out of one night it sounds like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to quantify but um 
Well, I, I want to respect your time here, Jared. I do want to uh, uh, close this down by uh, praying sure. over you. And actually, I think given what you just told us, it's it's worth uh, uh, praying over your son as well. Would you mind sharing his name with us so I can include him in the prayer? His name's Duncan. Duncan. Awesome. Yeah. Well, then uh, I'm going to I'm going to pray over you and, and Duncan and I'm going to close out our, our time here. Absolutely. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to spend time with Jared to, to celebrate his win. And thank you for, for laying in his heart this grow ruck. Thank you for not leaving him in the valley of the shadow. And I pray, God, that he'll carry with him what it feels like and what he learned when he's got nothing left to find something more that he didn't know was there. God, I also pray for his son, Duncan. Whether it's this particular event or another opportunity in the near future, God, I pray that, that Jared and Duncan will get to experience what he got to witness with that father and son in the event, that that passing on of, of pride and grit and strength and authenticity and integrity, that he'll get to experience that with his son and that you'll give his son the spirit and the, the health of body to manage that because we all as men especially need to know what's at the bottom of us and that we can still move past that god thank you for jerry thank you for his presence in our community and thank you for this win in jesus name amen amen brother thank you so much for joining me do you want to leave everybody with anything or uh, can, can we call it a day just one last thought keep going right. keep pushing and uh, do a little bit more than you think you can do awesome Guys, this has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Until next time, it's just 1%. You got this. Thank you for joining us for your 1% better. Be you, just better, in mind, body, and spirit. Go to betterdaily.live, download our app, and check out our five-star coaching resources. We all have a cross to carry. It's lighter when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.live today.